The next step of this experiment mm. is Dr. Kat will now insert into your blood oh my God. some important ingredients that are going to help you feel better. When you can make your business your passion, then that is a secret source to being able to put in 20, 30, 40, 50 percent extra. If you're going into business for the money, you can't sustain that passion because you make a bit of money when you lose the passion. It takes 28 days to form a habit and 40 days to keep a habit. There's a war going on in your body. Yeah, so let's start this podcast, man. Um, Salam, brother. How you doing? Welcome, salam. I'm good. Welcome to the welcome to the Cashflow Convos podcast. Yeah, salam alaikum. Welcome, salam. So, what actually got you into uh, the anti aging? Anti aging. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor, so I'm really interested in making people healthier mm -hmm. and giving them quality of life. That's why I became a doctor, you know, um, to help people. But anti aging, particularly, I became really interested because medicine and what I'm trained in, what traditional doctors are, tr are trained in, doesn't doesn't generate and improve your health. Mm. It doesn't look at it at, in detail and say, how can we improve your state, give you better memory, focus, attention, energy, vitality, the things that you need to have to perform on a day-to-day -day basis whereas it can be done and when i started to learn about the biology in this way i say actually we can we can get people to think clearer to perform better to get their stress out of their way to be more resilient and i was like okay look, this is just a whole different way of approaching the human body and mm. i was just like okay i just need to keep going with this you've done it quite well man like mashallah you've got to the point where you've got it to the level where A-list celebrities are coming through. Like, I think I saw Stephen Bartlett come through. You mentioned Anthony Joshua. You got like a lot of A-list. You said Michael Venom Page as well. So, so what was it like? How, how did you attract like all these A-lists? I think word of mouth. Mm. What we offer is quite unique. Our methodology is quite unique. You know, the way we look at your health is quite unique. And I think because it's unique, it's not widely available. You can't find it. In lots of places, it's not like going to your normal GP practice or, you know, normal private doctor. You mm -hmm. can't find it. You said you're the only one in Europe, was it? Or yeah, um, I would say that. Yeah, a few years ago, yeah, in the in the UK and Europe, we were driving this type of healthcare forwards. Yeah, I was the first doctor to get to ever you know get a custom made hyperbaric oxygen chamber, mm. based on the science. I understood the science of it, and I said, like, okay, we can apply this to engineer better state. And then we started to apply it for recovery, for brain health, for longevity, healing faster, wound healed faster, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, and then I started getting athletes coming to me. And for me, it's brilliant. Working with athletes is amazing because they have, they're like controlled subjects yeah. in the mean that they, if you tell them to do A, B, C, D, E, they're the most disciplined. They'll do A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, like for example, I think the reoxy. What, what is the reoxy thing? Because I've seen, I think I saw Ronaldo do that. And uh, Sergio Ramos when they were in Madrid. Yeah. So they were using the, the oxygen masks. So, so what is that for people who don't know? Oh, yeah, so that's the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, high pressure mm. oxygen therapy. So basically you go inside the oxygen chamber and you breathe 100% or 95% oxygen. That, And then you go inside the chamber. The chamber becomes pressurized. The pressure inside the chamber increases. At increased pressure, the oxygen becomes smaller and you start to carry 20 times more oxygen than you normally carry. And then you started to create 20, therefore you create 20 times more energy at a cellular level. Mm. Yeah? So energy levels go higher, basically. Your cellular energy levels go okay. higher. Yeah, so when we think of energy, you think of taurine, you think of caffeine, yeah. you think of Red Bull style, style energy. But actually, we're a power plant. We're always creating energy. How, how long does that last, sorry? The, the, how long would the energy levels last? Uh, um, it depends on your underlying state. Oh, yeah, so it depends. So, the, different, yeah. different so person cellular to person. energy is different too, kind of like, you know, that stimulant energy. Oh, okay. Then the cells use the energy for all of the functions they need to do. They're like workers, all mm. constantly doing stuff, repairing, replicating, building. Um, they're constantly doing stuff. The human body is, is a living organism. Mm. It's a multicellular organism. It's trillions of cells that are constantly living and dying. Yeah, and replacing yeah. themselves and building um and the complexity is is really really complex yeah are there any side effects to it of the hyperbaric you know it's very safe in very the right safe, hands yeah. it's very safe yeah okay yeah. what about like anti-aging uh devices in general are there any like side effects for that for them um there's side effects if you don't know what you're doing and you're doing things the wrong way 
Mm. Yeah, so um, for sure. But if you're coming, you know, that's where you want to find a doctor. If that's what your goals are to improve your health, find a doctor, a medical team that know what they're doing. It's I've seen the articles that are online, but can you reverse aging? You can reverse the rate of aging, yeah. But how? Okay, so the human body is predestined to every soul shall taste death. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable, right? Mm. We're, you know, we're one of 8 billion on the earth that come every 70 to 80 years. So how many billions of humans have come? You know, insane number, billions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billion, maybe trillions that have come since the beginning of man. So, and they all, we're all um, God's creations. Is it, There's an equation to creation. So the human body starts as a fetus and it grows. And then it gets to a point and it stops growing. And then it starts not just shrinking because the body physically shrinks, but the organs start to dysfunction. So if you can work on the important components of the body that deteriorate, and you know that these components are going to deteriorate, then you just work earlier. You start doing treatments that prevent the deterioration of those components, and you start them earlier. Mm -hmm. And then, what does that mean? The components work better. And if the components work better, the human body operates for longer. For longer, Mm -hmm. okay. Have you had any patients... That I've had reverse aging. Yeah, so you can test your biological age. Oh, okay. You can you, you can do tests. I've tested mine, my own biological what age. What is it? What's the? I'm 23. 23. Uh, yeah, yeah, biologically. Yeah. I thought you were 21. <laughs> I've aged since I've. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm joking. But yeah, biologically 23, and you now chronologically. Yeah. According to that test, I'm 23, and then chronologically, I'm like mid to late 30s. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how effective is it then, uh, anti-aging? Yeah, like I said, it, you know, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing if it didn't work, yeah. Yeah, because obviously there's there's some claims like online, they say they might say that anti-aging might be a scam. So what would your response be to that? I think there's, there's some scam artists out there. Yeah. Yeah, like in everything, right? You get people that do things at a high level and you get people that do things for the sake of money. Mm. And they're just make, looking to make a quick buck. Yeah. yeah. And so for sure there probably are scam artists out there who haven't done who haven't got the background in medical training who have done the further studies who don't you don't have the the, the passion and interest to mm. do it and therefore they're not going to get the results and therefore they are scam artists yeah and it's horrible yeah, yeah. but so, so what would you say is like the most effective device you'd say like if, if someone was to to use anti-aging my favorite one yeah. my favorite one is the hyper the oxygen change the oxygen yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the most, that's popular as well isn't it yeah, hyperbaric hyperbaric oxygen, oxygen change, therapy yeah. okay and for me, the reason why there's not many treatments that can stimulate new baby cells to grow from within your body, the hyperbaric can. Mm. What would you say your skin um, makes your skin age prematurely then? Um, okay, good question. So um, sun damage. Mm. Yeah, so excess sun, sun damage. Um, inflammation in the skin can also accelerate the aging of process of the skin having too oily skin or too dry skin yeah. right? so all control is really important the, the right balance the right balance um, excessive chemical use mm-hmm. right so using too much makeup for example too many toxins yeah um, so you want the more you can keep your ingredients simple and natural mm. the better what about creams like facial creams yeah, actually, I don't. You, you know, I don't Face recommend wash. using too many creams okay. on a day-to-day basis. Once you get to a good balance of your skin, you know, um, so what do you use? the Just reason water? why because the more moisturizer you put on, mm. the yeah. more dependent your skin gets on moisturizer, on moisturizer and yeah. it stops creating its own moisture. Oh, okay. yeah. It's so best keep it natural. Yeah, that's right. You know, you know, for example, when you got, you know, if you don't have dry lips and you use a lot of Vaseline, you stop using it, you'll get dry lips. Mm. Um, and it's a similar principle with skin. Yeah, what age yeah. would you say someone should start uh, looking into anti-aging and stuff like that? Um, I think it depends what you want to choose. Everyone's different, right? So, but we know that the human body starts deteriorating, I would say from mid to late 20s. That's mm. when it hits the peak and then things start to slow down within your body. So you want to start reversing things. Then if you want to extend life, yeah. And performance of the human body. Okay. Yeah. Because well, well, would you not take into a factor like food as well, nutrition, exercise? Absolutely. So a lot yeah. of factors will be obviously because, into because place. Some, uh, some individuals age faster. So why do you think that is? Why do you think some people age faster than others? There could be genetic components to that. Um, mm. It's exactly what you said. How you live your life is how you will live your life. Like nutrition and stuff like that. Right. 
Yeah, so how you live your life is how you will live your life. I often say that. What I mean by that is how you currently live your life, how you eat, move, sleep, stress, what you put in, eyes, ears, mouth, will affect the way the body operates. Yeah. Mm. And if you don't allow it to heal, regenerate, you don't sleep well, you live in a very stressful life, you're overstressing. This is why CEOs burn out and they actually have a lower life expectancy. Yeah. People under a lot of stress, business owners typically... Go through depression as well. Go through depression, they burn out, their body can't take it, their biology can't take it anymore, and they get heart disease quicker, and they get um, you know, a higher, higher risk of heart attacks and strokes. Then they need to come to Dr. E to get some you know, well, anti-aging yeah, devices. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> before that, yeah. yeah. yeah so ideally you, before that, man, we want to prevent that, right? Yeah, 100%, because, man. You know, you know, where I grew up at, in probably, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but I grew up at a time when one of my earliest memories is being in, in, in my mom's older brother, Hamad passed away, I must have been, and we were in the family home, yeah. and the, the body was there. And I just remember maybe being four, five, six, I can't remember the exact age, but everyone saying, oh, when it's your time, it's your time. Mm, definitely. You've heard that expression, right? Yeah. yeah. But Allah still says, look after your body. Mm. It's an amana, right? Yeah. So, you know, those two arguments to some people are like, oh, but it's in your time, it's your time. But you should still look after your body. Your you body, should still yeah. give yourself the best conditions to have a high quality of life. Because ultimately, you want to be cycling when you're 70. You want to be swimming when you're 70. You want to be playing with your kids and your grandkids when you're 80, you know? Yeah. And you can, if you look around, there's some people who are still at 85, 90, living a quali high quality of life, doing bench presses and at the gym, mm. and pull-ups and chin-ups, right? Yeah. And then there's many 60-year-olds that can't do that. Yeah, so do you think there's a limit to anti-aging? Because some people think that uh, too much anti-aging could lead to a quest for immortality. Yes, uh, um, the quest for Im immortality, I mean, I think that's just, you know, I think, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't believe it immortality is possible yeah yeah, yeah? Uh, so that's my person personal perspective yeah um whether people are looking for it that's there that's up to them because i feel like some people like might get too like into it so obsessed, they, yeah. yeah obsessed with like anti-aging to the point where obviously they don't want to you know yeah. get to that level and, and life is not just about living for yourself mm. it's also about living for others right yeah. and so a lot of my patients they come because they're doing it for themselves so that they can give to others mm. oh, okay does that make sense? So that they can be the best selves and show up for the people around them. Yeah, I think I've yeah. seen your brochure trying to turn people into superhuman. What's that? It's Explain just, a, that. that's a bit of fun. You into know? heroes. <laughs> but what I mean by that is I want people to feel the best they've ever felt. Yeah. Unleash their own superpower of health. Because okay. yeah. what, what, what is a superhuman? Someone that has the best strength, someone that has the, is fastest, someone that you know, thinks clearer, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. I want people to experience very quickly how they could feel. And you, we have a protocol in two hours, they do a treatment protocol with us and they feel that superpower of health. Is that any age yeah. though, yeah? Any age. I, can't, I feel good, man, after that IV drip. And that um, was just a little, little taster. Don't be nice. I'm going to have to come back again for another session, man. <laughs> yeah, you got to come for the superhuman. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we, we trialed that on, you know, we trialed that on people that were... Um, preparing for CrossFit competitions that were training and we told them go and try and beat your personal best within 24, 48 hours. Mm. Everyone beat one of their personal best but after that yeah. superhuman. So they 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 bench faster, they have more consistent time. So it helps their, you with like workouts tracks, stuff like that as well. They're racing. Yeah. So before it'll help your strength, it'll help your performance. Before so before yeah. would you say before or after gym? Like IV gym? Superhuman before. Before yeah. yeah if you're traveling, come and do a superhuman. If you're you know, want to get rid of jet lag, you want to guarantee that when you get on stage or when you're doing the thing that you want to perform the best at, come and prepare yourself. Mm. Superhuman yeah. is then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and nutrition, so you're saying nutrition is important as well then? For yeah, nutrition is very important. Okay. Because why? Because that fuels the human body, the cellular processes yeah. to give us that state of health. And um, the nutrition that we get from our food is very poor. Not, not just because we go to the chicken shops and eat, right? yeah. even if we're eating healthy. The reason why that is, is because the food, the soil now yeah. has been sprayed with pesticides, mm -hmm. chemicals, toxic chemicals that end up in our soil, that end up in our food, that end up in our body. Yeah. Okay. And those toxic chemicals then break down and our gut wall. Mm. And it means that we stop being able to digest the important nutrition out of the food and therefore 
our cells can't make the proteins, hormones, and enzymes that they need. So we're already operating suboptimally. Yeah. Uh, speaking of nutrition, yeah. What's your opinion on veganism? I I, I don't think uh, my opinion is basically like if someone's doing it for ethical reasons, that's up to them. You know, mm. like everyone's free to choose what they want. But for optimal health, I I don't think veganism it provides the conditions for optimal health. Because a lot of people say veganism might help with anti aging and you know. So what people say, what the studies have shown, there's been some studies in this. The studies have showed yeah. that um, a predominantly plant based diet compared to a predominantly meat-based diet is better for longevity, mm. but related to cardiovascular disease. Yeah, yeah. So you must have a lot of patients that do turn fast as well. What's the benefits? Yeah, so what I'll do is I've, I've got a PDF on Ramadan, on a on a booklet of what to do during Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. If you, you can share it out, we'll put a link in. in this 100%, yeah, definitely. Um, but um, Ramadan is amazing. Mm. It's amazing that it's prescribed to us for health reasons, right? Mm. Um, and for kind of spiritual reasons. But for health reasons, studies more recently in the last 20 years have shown that intermittent fasting, so prolonged fasting more than 12 hours, stimulates anti-aging mechanisms within us. Wow. So no we way. start to reverse our age from fasting. So fasting is a form of anti-aging as well. 100%. Intermittent fasting is. The I was telling you about how your stem cells replace, your cells die. So intermittent fasting has shown that you get rid of your aging inflammatory cells that stick around and they drive all the toxins basically mm. flush out yeah and it can help remove toxins as well mm. as long as you're not flushing in toxins <laughs> yeah. and, you know having like really bad food yeah, yeah. you know that is the key you know you can make so many health gains in ramadan your blood sugar sensitivity can improve you know your your weight lot your weight and your body composition can improve uh, your hormonal balance can improve your your inflammation can go down your immune system can improve if you're just following some simple principles of what to do when you are eating. Yeah. What's your main uh, treatment then that you offer to clients? The main thing is that we do blood testing, okay. deep testing. So we look at over, um, we start with 150 biomarkers of your blood and urine, and we identify your imbalances in turn inside your biology, across your hormones, your blood sugar response, your micronutrients, your methylation, um, your cardiovascular, um, all the important foundations to produce health and then we correct them through prescribing you supplements we have our own supplement range um, as well as um, prescribing you the right therapies and then you work with a doctor and a functional nutritionist that's the bread and butter that's our heartbeat of what we do then over and above that people come to the clinic for the jet packs mm. okay the jet packs that will make you get quicker results that's the IV therapies we'll prescribe you depending on what you're looking to achieve. The hyperbaric chamber, the cryotherapy. We have all these tools, smart mm. technologies yeah. that's going to supercharge the components. Yeah. 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 And how do you stay unique? So let's say if someone comes like on the same street and does the same thing, how would you stay unique? I think that's the I think it's the experience and knowledge. Mm. We share a lot of knowledge, by the way. Yeah. You know, you're never going to stay unique. And I won't say that I made this knowledge. Mm. Right? Knowledge is something that comes from lots of different sources and I just put it into a system over time and we've got we're probably the most experienced at delivering it so we'll always have more experience because we're one of the first to get into it mm. um, so and we're always we're always developing and expanding the way we're getting results through the tools and technology so um, I think Hugo Boss you can innovate but you, you can't sorry you can imitate what's that Hugo Boss yeah in, innovate all right, yeah, right yeah. yeah so so do, do you invest in r&d as well 100 percent. yeah okay. yeah i had to invest a lot of money in r&d i had to kind of you know my parents remortgaged their house to help me buy the oxygen chamber how much was oh, that yeah. how much was the oxygen chamber 100 grand plus 100 grand for the oxygen chamber yeah so if someone wants to do something similar to you what would you advise them if they want to get into like the field you're in i would say honestly i would say to them go and learn the science and medicine first from the world experts and there are world experts out there i went to germany austria um, and america mm. okay in different elements and i brought that knowledge back and then i trialed it tested it and i was like oh my god this stuff is amazing it's transforming people's lives mm. i'm going to keep investing keep learning keep trying evolving so go and don't take the shortcuts when you're dealing with people's health Mm. you can't you know if i just if i just go look at oh humans menu i'm just going to copy it you're never going to get humans results yeah. mm. it's impossible 
Yeah. Because you don't know how they're using those products and technologies and personalizing it for the patient in front of you. Oh, so you personalize the actual for every 100%, patient. Everyone gets their yeah. own prescription of, yeah. uh, of the right strategy for them that fits into their budget, timeline and goals. Okay. Yeah, so it's catered yeah. to, to them. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But no, like, it looks good, man. The way you designed it, actually, it looks like it's, it looks very aesthetic as well. So how much would uh, something like this cost to actually make? The physical, say the whole business. Everything yeah, altogether. The whole yeah. business, yeah. probably looking realistically about, you know, you don't make this investment in one go, mm. but I think you're looking over a million, one to one, to one and a half million. A million pounds, is that? Yeah. Over a million pounds. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Seven figures. Seven figures. Yeah. Well, what's the return? So what? how much do you charge like patients? Okay, so the health program starts at around 1,000 and goes up to about 4,000 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Um, for a health personalized health program for a period. Then they're on a retainer. If they want to continue working with us in that way and maintain feeling 10 years younger, it's about 150 pounds a month working with the team thereafter. Um so everyone spends slightly different amounts. So there's no Depends average, what you're looking at people want. spending about three, four thousand pounds a year with us. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's different ways to fund that million to million and a half. You can finance lease some of it. You can take debt on the business once you've got some turnover. Mm. Um, so you don't need cash. It's not like you know, I need to have a, a million pounds in my bank account to set it up. It's yeah. over time basically. Yeah, so over I grew time. it over time. Over yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what do you think's the, the biggest lesson that you've learned? It's a tough one for me because in some ways I don't know if I'll do it differently. I think you have to go through the mistakes to learn the lessons. Um, but um, some quick lessons. Top, I, I, as you talk, I'm thinking about like operational mm. learning mistakes. Try and get people that you can learn from around you mm. sooner. Yeah. And if you're in an if you're in an industry that this has been done before, try and get the expertise in to to speed up your learning journey. I did I wasn't I did have experts around the world consult me and that helped me a lot to develop the unique elements of human. Okay. Um and I invested in that. Um but even on the operational side, I think you know, try and get some operational um experience around you, even if it's a mentor or advisor, someone you build a relationship with that you can that you can, they'll go for a coffee with you every month and just yeah. touch base. You help you give you the structure yeah. that you need to put in place. Um, everything from putting in deliverables and the stuff that you manage, KPIs, targets, incentives, mm. structures, reporting, being able to get the data out that matches the that requires the systems in place to be able to to do that. Yeah. Um, to get that. So the operational side, I would say, um, there's that. Marketing is so complicated, mm. um, and and especially nowadays, it's got more complicated. How do you um, market yeah. a business? Social media. Or? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many channels, right? There's, yeah. there's social media now. Within social, there's LinkedIn, there's Instagram, Instagram mm. there's Facebook, TikTok. there's TikTok, there's word of mouth as well. There's yeah, so that's that's social media covers those. Yeah. Then you've got digital. So digital, you're thinking about all your Google ads, your website. Then you've got your kind of and your in any any other paid ads. You've got PR, press. You've got events. Oh, you went TEDx. Referral, so newspaper. TEDx. Yeah, so that that was a marketing. I got you. Is you it? Got, yeah. How was it? That was a that was cool, man. That was a great experience. Did, did you speak and speak there? Or? Yeah, he's, yeah, he did, spoke. Yeah. Oh, okay, TEDx. Yeah, yeah. see that. That was a great decent. experience. What kind of to puts you on the spot? Twenty minutes to give a presentation and not have a script. Mm. So I had to learn it off the way. It was great. It was awesome. It was formative. It helped yeah. me go through the process. Really helped me, you know, feel that I'm on that I am someone that's worthy mm. of giving knowledge out yeah. as well. Was that local then? Or? That was 2019. I did that in in Glasgow. Just in Glasgow, COVID, oh, okay. Just before okay. COVID, yeah. Glasgow, so that was before, was that when you after you start started your business or was it before? That was before I started Human. So before I was you still doing human. this type of medicine in my old business. I had another business before this. Okay, what business was that? That was a medical spa. Medical spa, okay. okay yeah, yeah, so that was a kind of cosmetic dermatology, aesthetic medicine practice. Oh, and what made you like stop from doing that? And I was just, start? I just loved what we were doing on the health, health, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just loved what we were doing on the health. And um, just seeing people's quality of life so quickly turned around yeah. over a couple of months that if they went to their GP, 
as a GP because I still am a GP. Mm. I know what I can't, what I can and can't do. I know what knowledge I don't have, and mm. the tools I don't have a- able to fix those problems. Mm. No. So all I can do is prescribe a drug for you to for the rest of your life, yeah. or I can send you to a specialist who's going to medicalize you. So many people can get solutions that they just don't currently know. So you yeah. offer fast results, basically. Is that what? Is yeah, that what we get forty-two yeah? percent improvement in people's health in eight weeks. Yeah, how does that make you feel, though? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I feel good. Honestly, I feel good. It's like I feel good because it's it's where for me it's my mission. You know, it's become my mission. It's mm. a purposeful mission. Yeah, yeah, and and that's why I put my heart, my soul, and my energy and my time into it because the more people that can experience that improvement in quality of life, the better. Now, I remember my dad told me he was like when I was about seventeen, eighteen, choosing what career to go down at university. It was going to be finance. It was going to be medicine and he and he said to me and my mom was like oh you got you're gonna to have to be a doctor they didn't get a chance to go to college right because they mm-hmm. came very young into the country my dad 15 years old my mom became later 16 year old they met at 19 and got married mm-hmm. you know and and so they didn't have my mom was like you're going to become a doctor and like, oh, you know, <laughs> when your mom tells you that you know, like, yeah <laughs> and to be honest i wouldn't be here without my parents you know really being so you know focused and driven especially my mom to to unleash the power of education because why because they didn't have the chance to do that and that was something they really wanted to do to put their mind to it we're investing in our children so that they can have that chance anyway my dad said to me he was like look you can go work in the city and you can make money you can do good things with your money or you can go and become a doctor and just by doing your job you're just, you're going to get blessings from people that carry a weight that you don't understand that has a value that you can't see yeah, that there's a baraka change of lives. Mm. Yeah, people. and there's a there's a there's a baraka. It doesn't just necessarily need to be a doctor. You can be a social carer. You can be a teacher. Yeah. There's so many things that you're doing that are improving people's quality of lives mm. that you're getting blessing from. Mm. Smiling is a sunnah. Why? Because you don't know, especially in London, how many people are depressed. Yeah, just a smile to them. Like wow, like this guy, just a random guy, smiled at me. Actually, maybe not, not in a pervy way, but you know, <laughs> but you know, he's winking ra- as well. Yeah. <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote his number down. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, random guys smiled at me, and it might be an open, day, and they felt it, and they might mm. be like, he "Made my day." We don't know. A lot of people are suffering out there, man, and the conditions of the urban living, Western world, is so it makes you look in just for yourself. You, everyone lives for themselves. They stop forgetting to look out for others. And because you stop forgetting to look out to others, you stop caring for others and looking out for people's deterioration. Mm. Yeah. And you're not dependent on each other anymore because you can just get delivery when you want and you don't just go out to the shops. Yeah, yeah. Everything's automated everything's and you get lazy, automated. man. Yeah. You live in your own little insulated bubble and you think, and then social media is there to give you a bit of an ego boost yeah. to put yeah, yourself yeah. get a couple of likes. It's a really difficult time to manage for younger people yeah. because yeah. they don't realize it's affecting the way they, they think. And they become more anxious, more depression. I'm seeing mm. loads of younger people, a lot more depression and yeah. more anxiety, more isolation. Yeah. And that's, you know, people are living tough lives. There's the VR headsets now, isn't it? The Apple Pro Vision. Yeah. What's your opinion on them? My general opinion is that we've got to get off the technology a bit more. We've got to learn how to mm. manage that before it manages us. Yeah. Yeah, because it's already changing our biology and making yeah. us more likely to be anxious, make more, but worse decisions. You know, getting into arguments, poorer relationships, poorer posture, physical disease, deterioration, mm. you know. And so we got to get off the digital. We've got to be able to detox from the digital, just like you got to detox from the dairy. Mm. Yeah, we got to be able to put it down. Yeah. yeah, what about screen time? What would you, how put much? It down. Put it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get children coming to my clinic with anxiety. Yeah. I said, show me your screen time. Yeah. How many hours? Eight hours. Whoa. Ten hours. No way. I'm sure if we looked at our phones, we'd be embarrassed as well. Exactly, I'd rather yeah. go for a walk, exercise, yeah, get the natural some fresh air. Yeah, the yeah. Natural when, fresh if air. you're ever feeling down, look up to the sky. Yeah. Look up. Yeah. Well, look outside. up to the sky. Yeah, when you're outside. <laughs> Why is that? Just it gives you perspective. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just instantly feel a bit brighter. You know, sometimes when we're down, we're just in our thoughts. Yeah. This brain is generating thoughts all the time. Mm. Yeah. That's why we do this. 
we used to, you know, people don't do it anymore, but when we were kids, we were like, oh, this guy's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is basically your thoughts are just generally generating, generating, generating. Yeah. And that's what the brain does. It generates thoughts. You know, it only has purpose if you give it purpose. Mm. <laughs> so uh, why do you care about human performance? Uh, where did that come from? I think, you know, working in hospitals, working in healthcare, you see people sick mm. and you see how it affects them. And if there is a way that you can not just prevent that, but you can improve, give people the opposite, which is I'm going to make people feel better and experience their life better. And I've seen it for myself. Why not? You know, it's a, you know, being able to improve someone's quality of life, how they experience their day to day is so, so dramatic, you know, because you might not realize how you having slightly low, you might be feeling a little bit tired, a little bit, you know, not having the energy that you want, not sleeping as well, getting colds and flus every now and again, a bit of digestive issues, um, get some rashes that come up and down, some joint pains and aches, you know, just you're looking tired, people say to you, oh, you look tired, you might be a bit ratty, you're losing your temper a bit more. These are all signs that your body is imbalanced. Okay. And when you can create that balance back again, all of that gets better. Suddenly, you're more present, you're more focused, you don't lose your temper. Yeah. You have the energy when you want. You don't get colds and flus. You know that's a different quality of life. You can, exp you know, if you think about when you experience life the best, when you're most present, mm -hmm. you know that you make the best decisions. Yeah. yeah, and then your relationships get perform better. better. Mm -hmm. So, perform what about better. like medication? Um, like people, like the doctors prescribe. What's your take on that? Like, uh, no uh, antibiotics, neurofin, paracetamol. What's your take on that? I think there's just oh, we know that there's over use of prescriptions. Is there? Yeah, we know that doctors prescribe way too much. But they test a lot of medication on people. Why is that? No, uh, the med the medications have a role. Yeah. Right. But I think we're just using them too much because why they don't have any other tools. They haven't yeah. learned how to improve someone's health through supplementation, nutrition, and lifestyle. Herbal medicines. Herbal mm. medicine, the role of different ingredients from plant-based, natural, non-toxic. Yeah. If you haven't been taught that, how can you do that? You can't do that. Like cancer, isn't it? There's no cure. And some people say that cancer is preventable, mm. right? And some people would describe it as a chronic disease. Why? Because we're always producing cancer cells and we're always producing cells that kill cancer cells. Something yeah. we call natural killer cells. It's in our immune system. We, we release them in our, from our sleep. So do you, do you believe we can prevent cancer? I believe you can improve your risk to prevent cancer. Hmm. You can improve your chances, sorry. So how is that? How do, how do we You would improve? do that from having a healthy, balanced immune response, mm -hmm. loading up on antioxidants that fight oxidative stress that it drives cancer, that having non-toxic chemicals, there was a, there's, since they re introduced um, herbicides, they did a study in America, a doctor called Dr. Zach, Dr. Zach Bush collected this evidence. From the 1970s, in the area, one of the states that they introduced this herbicide, there was an increase in cancer. Okay. So there, we know that toxic chemicals that we're exposed to drives cancerous changes at a cellular level. Mm. So that will eventually manifest in cancer. As long as we, you know, if we don't, support the processes that fight cancer mm. okay so that's what we need to do okay so and that, that's a multi-pronged strategy yeah the right supplements the right nutrition um checking your bloods making sure all the pathways are working well the detoxification pathways mm. if they're not you support them treatments like the hyperbaric chamber yeah. you know there's things that you can do regularly that it will give you the best chances not to develop the cancer mm. and so that your immune system fights the cancerous changes yeah. effectively yeah. So I want There's to a war going on in your body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I wanted to ask you about nutrition. What foods do you think we should avoid? Try and be consistent in Ramadan. Use Ramadan to break a habit. One of the habits that you want to break. Yeah. Mm. Start with one. It takes 28 days to form a habit and 40 days to keep a habit. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to break a habit, 28 days you've got Ramadan. With your 14 hours a day of fasting. It's just the other eight that you mind yourself. Of that, you're sleeping for about five, five to six, maybe seven hours, right? Mm. So you haven't got long, really. Okay, so try and form good habits and remove a bad habit. Now, in terms of nutrition, what are the things that are bad habits? Fried foods, mm. 
definitely try and cut down on those if that's if you're doing that a lot of that cut down on fried food if you're having a lot of refined sugars that includes juices so that's definitely some some nutrition tips in mm. there hydrate make sure you get your electrolytes in as well yeah. have electrolytes during Ramadan because that retain water in your in your cells and in, in your blood okay yeah. so um, we have a really good um, electrolyte supplement called hydrator it's online if you wanted to order it as well okay. we'll give you we'll give the cash flow convos team a discount <laughs> exclusive, well. yeah. exclusive yeah we'd love to man uh, <laughs> yeah. but um so what about in terms of workout routine so where depends what your goals are okay. let's talk about the different goals in ramadan mm. um one might be losing body fat mm-hmm. one might be um gaining muscle uh, one might be just overall kind of um, strength mm-hmm. gains yeah so um if you're looking to if you're looking to um, burn fat in Ramadan, then first principle is calories in have to be um, less than calories out. So you've got to do the exercise mm-hmm. still. Whether you do it fasted or whether you do it unfasted, it doesn't make much of a difference. Okay. Um, if you want to go for that kind of 30-minute jog before iftar, it's a great time. Right, because you're in a prolonged fasted state, you will burn more fat, fat mm. right, uh, rather than burning carbs as a fuel source. Okay, so, um, but generally, in principle, calories in, less than calories out. If you're trying to kind of lose weight, and if you're trying to lose fat, then I would do the fasted running, and then when you do eat, don't have high sugar intake. Yeah, yeah. Just have nice carbs. You can get carbs from um, your vegetables. Cut out the cakes, biscuits, breads, and Breads. pastas in Ramadan. Yeah. yeah. And then happy days. Then, You're yeah. going to get the results. Then. In terms of um, uh, maintaining muscle mass, protein. You need to have your one to two grams per kilogram of protein. That's quite a lot to get in. So mm. definitely incorporate protein shakes in yeah. um, at iftar or um, even just before suhoor as well. Yeah. Don't, have a, don't have a heavy protein shake. You can even do a vegan plant-based protein. Yeah, because a lot of people got the diet ones as well. There's the new diet ones. There's the vegan ones. There's different different types. Because obviously the way the way is the main like the popular one, but yeah. there's obviously different kinds there's as well. There's pea-based protein. We've got three yeah. types of proteins available: mm. one pea-based, one collagen-based, and yeah. um, and one whey-based. But did you put protein in here as well? Yeah. So well, what proteins in this one? I put um, collagen peptide protein. That's really good for your soft tissues, your cartilage, mm. your skin, your hair. It's only got 13 grams per serving of protein. But actually, I've also put essential amino acids in there as well, which on top of the collagen will then build uh, building blocks for protein. So I put that in my smoothie. That's a great recipe to have yeah. in Ramadan. A, um, a nice protein powder, amino acids in the smoothie. I use coconut, unsweetened coconut milk, or you can use unsweetened almond milk. And then you put in a bit of kale and spinach and frozen berries. The spinach mm. and kale is important because it supports detoxification of your liver. You have that every day, you're going to feel good. Yeah, High energy. We've yeah. got the full whack today, man. The, yeah. you know, the IV drip, the protein shakes, the smoothies, the, you know. The supplements. Yeah. All the supplements. The full check, out, check out Dr. E. Yeah. Human. He'll turn you into superhuman. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. And uh, I was going to ask, uh, what is VO2 max? Oh, VO2 max is your, I love energy, by the way. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and so VO2 max is a, a test that you can do that, correlates to the amount of oxygen volume of oxygen maximal the amount of essentially means that how much oxygen you can take in and utilize as energy can we do that can i do that we t- we are anyone can do that test yeah okay and then as we get older from 30 years old our vo2 max drops by 10 percent on average a decade okay so if you don't have the energy the vo2 max at 70 you're not going to be able to do the cycling that you want to do that's why we do treatments to improve your VO2 max. You can also, exercise-wise, if you want to improve your VO2 max, do low-intensity steady-state exercise. Okay? Less, isn't it? Less. Less. Yes, yeah. zone two exercise. Yeah, would you say, would you say less is more effective than high intensity? For VO2 max, yes. VO2 max, yeah. okay. But what about in general? What, what, do you, what do you prefer? I think everyone should have it. After, after 30, everyone should have less in their training program. Yeah, but would yeah. you, would you say a mix, of, a, a mix of less and hit? And then strength training is very important because we mm. also lose muscle mass from 30 years old at about 3 to 8% a decade as after well. After what age? 30? 30, yeah. How um, much percent? 3 to 8%. You lose muscle mass regardless of your train. 
But you no, if you train, you can. If you train hard, on mm. average, we lose that. If you train hard, then you can prevent some of that loss. Yeah, yeah. yeah? But but if you don't train, you lose. If you it. don't train hard, but as you're after thirty, especially forty, you got to train harder. It's harder to put on muscle as yeah, you get yeah. older, and you you burn muscle more. So that's why um, uh, strength exercises, core strength exercises, are very important. Deadlifts, yeah. squats, abs, bench press. Bench press, yeah, yeah. Uh, but more of the kind of abs, flanks, abs, yeah. planks. posterior chain, so your glutes, your hamstrings, and quads. Okay, Deadlifts, yeah. those are going to be your, your really important ones. Fun- more functional strength is really, really important as we get older. Yeah, do you go gym by any chance? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite um, day like? Back day. Chest, I, I have my bench. favorite is doing um, either boxing or muay thai. Muay thai. So it's right. not really gym, um, but I enjoy. I enjoy them. I, I do two strength training sessions mm. a week. Um, I, and I try and get in two list exercises a week. And I do one either one boxing or one Muay Thai. Um, I'm lucky because I work with some great athletes and they're happy to kind of like um, either train me themselves. We're working with MVP, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> one of his coaches, yeah, he's helping me. One of his teammates, actually. Yeah, no, that's training. decent, man. Yeah, no, I, I like Co- back there, Gorilla man. Hassan. Gorilla Hassan. That's his name, yeah. Oh, okay. That's decent, yeah. man, yeah. So well, what's the next challenge for you in life? As a human, as a human, my next next challenge is um, current challenge is continual spiritual development and connection with with God, and I think that's coming up in Ramadan. It's a great time for me to kind of utilize. Yeah. That's my immediate next challenge. Mm, yeah. Maximizing Ramadan is a great time for me to kind of disconnect from the dunya, mm. yeah, and mm. just like all the material things that. I'm worried about day to day. Disconnect from them and focus on the connection. Getting strength from the connection. Spiritual. Getting yeah. power from the connection. Getting belief from the connection. Hundred percent. Self belief is so important. Self love and self belief is so important. Appreciation for yourself, for your intention, for is so important. And keeping your intention good is really, really important. You know, it has been for me really, really important in. Um, being able to have the conviction to be successful and do the things that I want to do yeah. and to go after things I want to do. Sure. Yeah. What does the future look like for Dr. E in terms of business? Uh, in terms of business, um, I want to keep growing human. Mm. Yeah. So inshallah, this year we're launching a national health program that people from around the country can work with us. Uh, we're launching that, uh, inshallah, hopefully by end of March, maybe just after Ramadan. Um, where we're partnered with the Randox Health Clinic group. So there's a patient can go to any Randox clinic, 70 clinics around the country, do a blood test and start working with my team online. And we drop ship their tests and work with them remotely. Um, we're launching that gut healing uh, test that people are doing in the comfort of their own home. Okay. Find out if they get leaky gut. That's the shorter term. Medium term is going to be about, inshallah, I want to get to 10,000 patients. Once I've got to 10,000 patients, then I will have a strong user case set. We've got over two, 3,000 now. What, and then we're going to present that evidence to the health system and say, look, this is how we're delivering healthcare. This is the results we're getting, 40% across these disease states. Come on, let's start offering this in general practice. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because general practice isn't free. It's free, we don't pay for it. But it's been paid for by the insurance and it actually is really costly to deliver. Yeah. I believe that this type of healthcare is less costly and gives better p- results to people. Yeah. When you can make your business your passion, yeah. then that is a secret source to being able to put in 20, 30, 40, 50 percent extra than yeah. someone else that is not really passionate. If you're going into business for the money, then that's not really you can't sustain that passion because you make a bit of money, then you lose the passion. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. So with the future, you asked me, what's the future for okay. human? It's about growing it as a brand nationally and then inshallah internationally. Definitely. You know, we want to get this type of healthcare onto as many people as we can. And the results that we've seen with like two, 3,000 patients, we want to make that 20, 30,000 patients over a couple of years, even less, and then globally thereafter. Because this type of healthcare is just not available and it's so powerful. Hmm. Um, and, um, and then off the back of it, I've already registered a... F- uh, an arm of the business that will be a charity, charitable arm, inshallah. Um, I'll give you an exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you asked for it. We love exclusives. <laughs> uh, exclusive. The exclusive of this charity is going to be called Humankind. Humankind, yeah. And it's about humans being kind. 
Okay. Because you need it. Nice and supporting hear. people to be kind. And so that's what the, the, the charity and the intention of uh, putting that out. Because I believe that sometimes you put a good intention thing out to the universe. Definitely. Man. And then allow the universe to support you to deliver that. Yeah. And then that's it. So that's that's the plans. God well, willing. Man supposes, God disposes. Well, it's been a lovely conversation, Doc T. Uh, we wrap this podcast up with our final question. Does money buy happiness? Definitely not. Okay. Definitely not. From what I've seen with the many patients I've worked with, money does not buy happiness. Okay. So what makes you happy? Happiness to me is contentment, is being grounded, and it's being in a state of flow. Mm -hmm. Not being reactive in your, to your environment, not being in your ego, not being driven by your desires. It's about, really, it's about being in control. Mm. And that allows you to be at peace and accepting, but also driving. And the other side of it is, for me, what makes me happy is knowing that I'm trying my best and I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. I'm being curious, I'm learning, I'm, I'm advancing myself and hopefully giving back to others to support them to advance. So that makes, that genuinely makes me happy. Definitely, man. Well, thank you for coming on. I really enjoyed the conversation yeah. and appreciate you teaching us all about the biohacks and all about um, anti-aging. And it's been a, a pleasure speaking to you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. E, for coming on. Yeah. And I appreciate it. You shared a lot of knowledge. And uh, for the viewers, they learn, learn a lot. Yeah. A lot of science and a lot of anti-aging tips as well. And a lot and of Ramadan, Ramadan tips. tips. Yeah, you can't forget that. So make sure you check out Dr. E, a human. He's in uh, South Kensington, is it? Yeah, we're based in South. Yeah. Listen, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, Shout yeah, out your uh, socials. What's your socials? People uh, we're at you. human at H-U-M-2-N, the number two, because it's about the human 2.0. And uh, my personal is at B -Y by dot dot dr e yeah so, e -dot 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 -e. so yeah we're, we're gonna wrap it up but but guys if you want to see a part two if you want to see a sparring session between us three you know we'll do that in episode two and uh make sure you subscribe for that one yeah so. make sure you check it out take care take care check it out